they heard of Scientology so afraid of. This, this is SPTV. Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of SPTV. Today we're going to be auditing um, one of our least favorite people in the world. One of the people that was abusing us as kids inside of the Florida hotel. And one of these so-called executives, self-proclaimed executives, a.k.a. glorified child trafficker, Marty Mark Rathben. So let's take a look at all the lies that Marty is going to want to spew in this little segment. And also let's contextualize since Marty Rathbun reveals about Lisa McPherson, let's contextualize the plight of a minor inside of these hotels while these goons were busy covering up someone who was dead inside of their disgusting abominable hotel i'm going to move ahead uh, a few years down the line here to the late 1990s when uh, another landmark moment for the church of scientology the lisa mcpherson case can you uh just generally describe your role in that in handling that case by the church okay my role in the lisa mcpherson case uh began I guess a little bit earlier than the Lisa McPherson case. I had left Scientology in uh, late 93, November 93, right after we got the exemption about a year, about a month after we'd gotten tax exemption because it was something I sort of hung on and had been working on for nine, 10 years. So there you go, guys. From Marty Mark Rathbun's own mouth. He worked on getting tax exemption. He worked on pitching a full-blown child trafficking ridden fraud scheme for 10 years is how much this man worked to camouflage what him and the rest of his adult consenting buddies who were all goo goo gaga for whatever Elron Hubbard told them to do, who all left their critical thinking skills at the door. So as much as Marty Rathbun wants to proclaim that he's coming clean he is not coming clean whatsoever. He has never come clean. He couldn't be more dirty if he was not literally filled with blood of all the child exploitation that took place while he paraded around in a hotel dressed in a fake military uniform telling everyone inside of the hotel that he was the Deputy Inspector General for Ethics. Imagine you're Marty Rathbun and you have done nothing with your life except take pathetic courses inside a hotel that apparently Marty Rathbun took very serious whatever certificates he got from L. Ron Hubbard. This man took that very, very serious. So there you have it from Marty Rathbun's words, his own mouth. Ten years he was working with attorneys. Doing what exactly, Marty Rathbun? What type of lies? What type of falsehoods? What type of false reports were you using? So you could bamboozle idiotic Monique Yingling, who has no critical thinking skills of her own. As if you guys didn't choose your attorneys. Hence, select your attorneys. 
So you could also scam the attorneys. But that's the problem with all of Scientology's attorneys, you guys. That is the problem that they have for themselves. Monique Yingling, full-grown woman that that woman is, has a problem in her hands. It's called, she didn't bother to do a shred of due diligence. Monique relied on whatever in the hell David was telling her, Marty was telling her, Mike Rinder was telling her, and anyone else that was working with those attorneys to falsely prop up a child trafficking hotel masquerading as a 501c. Imagine being the man that spent a decade working on legitimizing the actual exploitation of minors at an industrial size scale. Imagine you are that man and you have the disgusting face that you see right there. And got, okay. Uh, shortly after that, I had left. David Miscavige persuaded me to come back. I went off to the ship. Now notice how he's talking about how he left Scientology after he got it approved 10 years. Marty Rathbun blew, you guys. Marty Rathbun didn't like when Davey, his little bestie, was mean to him. So Marty pitched a tantrum as a full-grown adult and he made a run out of the hotel. Imagine that these executives, so-called executives, grown-ass men and women that they were, did have the ability to leave the damn hotels. Imagine that, you guys. But then imagine that these exact same people locked up kids against their will and made it impossible for the kids to do what these adults could do for themselves. So right away, for whatever reason here, Marty is pitching this as a very normal situation. Let me see how I pitch it so I come across normal, is what Marty Rathbun was telling to himself. As you see him grabbing words of pitches that he could put together real quick to start making himself look good, because that's all these mouthpieces ever were. How do I make disgusting, unthinkable things look good? Call up Marty Rathbun if you need those type of services. Ship in the Caribbean that we have to do training and get auditing services, which I really hadn't had a lot of in the 10, 12 years I'd been in Scientology. When I was done with all that, I'd come back to the flag land base in the summer of 95. And I was working for the RTC office at flag under a woman named Angie, who was in charge of that office. And basically she was. So isn't that interesting, you guys? Angie Trent. Well, 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 Angie Trent, Deputy Inspector General for Technology, Angie Trent. Also, Angie Trent, the woman responsible for sending me as an underage child to the Clearwater Hole for two years to be twinned with the self-admitted, you know exactly what in the literal hell we mean, but in case there's any doubts or reservations as to what the hell I'm talking about, a self-admitted this that Marty Rathbun sent to that RPF. Isn't that great, you guys, that we put a little context as to who Angie Trent 
was. Not only was she a literal murder scene cover upper, as Marty just outed her here, really overseeing Lisa's situation. So Angie Trent and Marty Mark Rathbun are the two people inside of the hotel responsible for me ending up locked up against my will as a minor inside of the Hacienda Gardens with full bob wire all around me with cameras and motion detectors everywhere to be so-called auditing and rehabilitating. That was my job. What Angie and Marty Rathbun told me I needed to do in order to graduate the RPF, who Shelly Miscavige is the one that was involved in that one. Isn't that great, you guys? Shelly was the one that approved me to be graduating out of the RPF having to audit a self-admitted, full-blown self-admitted. Found to be this by one of Marty Rathbun's ethics interviews. Imagine that. Imagine you're Marty Rathbun and you find out that someone is this. And don't you worry, they didn't talk to the Clearwater police about it. The Clearwater police couldn't be more looped out if they weren't paying them to stay looped out. Gave him Scavenger's representative there. She's supposed to be handling all the technical uh, quality aspects of the church there. Um, all the technical qualities of the church there. So right now, let's just roll it back, you guys, because, again, for you to start learning how these MFers package all their little pitches, Angie Trent, the one responsible for the technical in the church. So great, Marty Rathbun. Can you tell us why Angie Trent was in charge of cleaning up after that woman died inside of the hotel, Lisa McPherson? And then can you also provide an explanation why Angie Trent locked me up against my will as an underage minor on the second floor of the Coachman building on May 1st, 1996 to interrogate me so she could send me to the hall. The RPF hall. Just so you don't play dumb. Because you have to start understanding, guys, that these people go to their little sanitized pitch and they always are looking for, oh, what were we calling it? Oh, yeah, she was very in charge of the technical. Meanwhile, Angie Trent was another pathetic dropout, another one of these pathetic kids that were literally given to the Sea Org by Scientology parents. And then she was so beautiful and she was so perfect for RTC that she got posted all the way up there. And she was a full grown adult woman when she was overseeing all of the abuses. So before everyone wants to try and bring out violins to really like cradle and canoodle unindicted child trafficking felons. Before everybody wants to come and save her from making those bad choices, those choices were being 
done premeditated. Those choices were being done supervised. Those choices were what these people were all about. In this disgusting criminal conspiracy fraternity sham that all of these adults were all about running in Clearwater, Florida, where they've not only been able to get away with it, they've been enabled to prop up their disgusting sham. Imagine being those people in Clearwater that do work in Clearwater's government, that do work in the Clearwater police, that do have plenty of evidence and reasons to go in there and find out what in the literal abominable hell is going on. But imagine that none of them have gone in unannounced. Imagine that all they've ever done is taking controlled PR tours of the facilities. Imagine all such facilities are filled with minors because none of those hotels could have operated without minors. The reliance of minors couldn't be more real AF. I mean, you guys have heard about a day without a Mexican and everything would stop. Well, imagine a day without children inside of the hotels. In Scientology, those organizations would come to a complete and utter screeching AF halt. They could not operate if they didn't have minors interrogating people to get their ethics Miners interrogating people to bring them up the bridge, so-called audits. Miners grooming and certifying adults that really want to get one of these certificates where they can play quasi-doctor, quasi-lawyer, quasi-nobody that does know it all. Because I read something from L. Ron Hubbard and that has really given me the opportunity to run unhinged. And right about now, Marty Rathbun, that's what you should be thinking about in your grand scheme of things of what in the hell you and Angie were doing in that hotel. You couldn't have been more unhinged. You couldn't have been more depraved, literally. Um, I had expressed some uh, criticisms about the way she was handling some of the technical matters, the way she was coaching people on their communication drills and on how they handled their metering. And shortly after that, did you guys see the smirk? I had expressed some concerns about people doing the communication drills and people doing the metering. This pathetic clown this pathetic clown you see here right now named called himself marty mark rathbun so-called deputy inspector general for ethics a title that he came up with for himself because he was definitely in davy's little bestie circle And just like that, he's able to really talk about, you know, correcting what these communication drills were about. The drills that Marty Rathbun was correcting, you guys, since I would know, since I was there when he was actually running a thing that he was calling Sec Checker School, where he was literally teaching us, the kids, how to interrogate the adults. How to be swinishly suspicious is what they were calling it. So, in what world is teaching children about interrogating adults about disgusting felonies that we had no shred of business doing? Given our age, Marty Rathbun, a critique about Angie's technology communication... <laughs> 
you couldn't be more pathetic regurgitating your sanitized talking points about what you and Angie were doing in those communication drills. Ms. Gavitch showed up to the base and I guess you he heard I'd been uh, saying such things and told me in no uncertain terms that uh, I'm not to be telling anybody anything. I'm just supposed to be doing what she tells me to do. You know, I was the guy that blew the organization two years earlier. I was supposed to follow her lead. He doesn't want me anywhere near him or on his lines. He doesn't want me bossing anybody around. And um, so it was like, you know. Isn't that great, you guys, how Marty Rathbun has no shame explaining how he was just a pathetic slave that would be told what to do, that would be told what to say, that would be told where to go. And he was choosing to be that pathetic slave. Imagine that. And imagine that he says it with so much pride because you better believe those in the inner circle of Davy's besties were proud AF of themselves for having figured out how to turn this multi-billion dollar racketeering child trafficking conspiracy into something that they could really stick their fangs and identify as, you know, part of the co-founders. Elvin Hubbard is the founder, but who were the co-founders? Well, apparently, Marty Rathbun, apparently, David Miscavige, apparently, Mike Rinder. Who else was working on getting this sham 501c approved? Because so far we got three names. The ones that were outward interfacing with the attorneys, lying to the attorneys. Imagine being Scientology attorneys, you guys. And you have a client that is so off the rails, so out of control. You never know when they're lying to you. You never know about anything they're doing. And imagine that these attorneys are so comfortable with the um, relationship that they have that they don't give an F to put their own law license on the line. Imagine that Monique Yingling had no qualms to put her law license on the line as she was brokering that deal. Isn't that great? Shout out to you, Monique, that has your law license on the line of whatever in the hell was pitched to you by Mike Rinder, pathetic Marty Rathbun, and David Miscavige, and you just took it at face value like the idiot that you are. Like the zero critical thinking skills attorney that you are paid to be. So go check with your bar in D.C. and see if they would ever give an F about investigating your law license and all the claims that you put in affidavits to purport this was a 501c situation and not a hotel trafficking kids across state lines, trafficking children across international waters, Monique Yingling. What type of Department of Justice buddies could you possibly have to have minus zero scrutiny on your obvious AF lies, Monique? What type of connections do you have so that justice can be perverted AF? so that no laws are getting enforced. Because right about now, we need to understand that part of the corruption. And your involvement with these characters that couldn't have been more lying because that's the only mode Marty Rathbun, Mike Rinder, and David Miscavige have as the three amigos at the top of this pyramid scheme. 
complete pathological self-serving grifting liars all child traffickers with glorified title oh i was wdc osa you guys i was the deputy inspector general for ethics you guys you were all glorified child traffickers targeting children and helping yourselves so start reconciling with the truth start trying it for a change because right now you are all getting your mf ethics in by being told what it is that you were doing as adults committing and conspiring to commit felonies in the United States. Because apparently, as long as you have $80 million to pay attorneys, you can keep all your legal woes at bay. Right, Marty Rathbun? It was pretty much keep your hands off of, you know, any involvement, any decision-making. So I was working on a whole program to, um, um, rehabilitate the class 12 auditors uh, at flag because there was a lot of complaints from parishioners about their services and uh in the course of this imagine that what he just said you guys again it's like it's it's insane how this disgusting clown can sit there oh i was there to rehabilitate the class 12 auditors the class 12 auditors, you guys, were all these very, very old senior people. Imagine. There was only about 20 of them. And they were all ancient. Because the class 12 auditors, the so-called best of the best of the auditors, that were trained under L. Ron Hubbard, some of them personally. And in Scientology, they don't like it if you look old. That's called LPR. So these old auditors had to be rehabilitated. Starting with their image, starting with propping them up and making them look a little more presentable because they were a disgrace they were disheveled they were out of their mind some of them were just literally actually crazy literally like they were just cuckoo totally cuckoo and imagine that the class 12 auditors is what debbie cook would be charging for the most money and again, what is a class 12 auditor? It's people that completed more two-week courses inside of a hotel. So just so that nobody gets confused as to the seniority and, oh, did they really know more than anyone else? So this Marty Rathbun is dangerous as he's figured out very clever ways to always pitch himself as the legit pawn man that he's not. He couldn't be more disgusting, pathetic, or con if those were not the first letters in front of his name. Con Marty Mark Rathbun. I was walking through the Hubbard Guidance Center of the Fort Harrison when all this where it's a, it's a completely quiet area everybody knows that has been a scientology for any long that whole uh huge floor it's all connected by a, a common hallway is a silent zone because people are having auditing sessions in each one of them i was walking through that one day and a door kicked open and i heard this loud voice hollering in glee uh in the hallway and i thought that was really odd and i went and inquired about what was going on and i went up to one of the class 12s and I said, what's happening here? He says, oh, that's Lisa McPherson. She just uh, attested to clear. So I just, even though I was told I wasn't supposed to, you know, say anything to Angie, I went down to talk to Angie. I said, you know, um, 
Did you see his smirk there again? Even though I was told not to tell anything to Angie. <laughs> you, you've got a, somebody up in the uh, Hubbard Guidance Center who just attested to Claire, who looks to me to be on the verge of psychosis. And she... <laughs> wow, Marty. It's so great that we have you to tell us when someone's on the verge of psychosis. Because it sounds like you have never in your life visited a mirror. The psychotic calling the psychotic psychotic, you guys. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that great? It quickly reminded me that I'm not supposed to be having any say about anything and, you know, keep your mouth shut. She said, that's Lisa McPherson. She says, David Miscavige is CSing and programming her case and I'm reporting on it weekly. Like in other words, buzz off to which I just went about my business and didn't think anything about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess about uh, six weeks later or several weeks later, um, you know, I hear that there's this incident where, um, Lisa McPherson is, um, had a uh, psychotic break and is coming to the Fort Harrison. And I inquired about that, like, how could you have somebody come to the Fort, Fort Harrison? It was Angie or her direct junior, I think her name was Ricky, said, well, it's not a problem because COB, meaning David Miscavige, you know, has directed us on handling a type three at the base just last May because somebody went nuts in the middle of uh, one of the events that he does down there. What's a type three? Type three is a person who's had a psychotic break. Can you imagine, you guys, that these people that claim that they are not practicing medicine without a license feel perfectly comfortable to discuss in interviews that their two-week course inside of a hotel was giving them insight as to how to deal with someone that is having a psychotic break. In what world is a hotel that has a known person that is experiencing a psychotic break equipped to handle said psychotic break without a shred of medical person anywhere near. Okay. Okay. And uh, so guy went type three in the middle of an event and he knew all about it. And we handled the whole thing right here on the base and reported the whole thing to him. So I said, we handled so that's another term that you guys really need to understand because that's another term that needs to be highlighted. That's how these know-it-alls address things that were way above their paid grade, way above their head. They couldn't have been more infantile, role-playing, pretending that whatever in the hell L. Ron Hubbard wrote three decades ago would really help someone having a psychotic break. Imagine that getting locked up against your will, getting locked up against your MF will for these adults would cause them to go psychotic. Imagine what it does to unsuspecting children you guys because again as we celebrate lisa mcpherson's death imagine she has not received a shred of justice because this hotel operates without a shred of impunity without a shred of accountability enabled cradled and canoodled by the state of Florida.
who's very pressed to keep this child trafficking hotel really running because apparently there are no laws in Florida to enforce. Apparently, that's just not a thing. In Florida, you can literally get away with murder. Ask Marty Rathbun. Okay. Uh, and don't, you know, it's not your business. I'm handling it. You know, she'd already told me that she's been reporting on the case weekly to him. So I thought nothing of it. I guess nine days later, something like that, Janji now comes to me and says, hey, you know, when you're doing a type three handling, what kind of sedative do you use if, uh, if a sedative is required? Like is Valium or do you use something like that? I said, well, no, we usually, I mean, I've, I've seen type three handlings or participated in them for 20 years and everybody always used chloral hydrate because it's. Isn't that great little Mr. Marty Smirk? Rathbun really wants to um, talk about the drugs that you can take and the sedatives that you should be looking for if someone is going through a type 3 handling. And in his 20 years of experience, which would really make sense if Marty Rathbun didn't just tell us that he had no auditing experience prior to going to the free wins after he blew, after pitching to the IRS that Scientology was a 501c. So in what world was Marty Rathbun not trained, but also doing type 3 handlings of psychotics? And in what world did he not do a lot of auditing or training until he went to the free winds, until he was put there because he was being cradled and canoodled because he was very upset that his bestie, David, was being mean to him. Go check his complaints, you guys. Go check why Marty Rathbun blew the base. Because Marty Rathbun is nothing but a pathetic cry baby. And one of David Miscavige's favorite goons. He was willing to do David's bidding, a.k.a. co-conspirator number one. As if these two were not two peats in a pod until, you know, David found Tom Cruise. It's the most mild, uh, least narcotic sedative, and it's very, very effective at getting somebody to sleep, and that's the whole purpose of it. And I had, you know, that was my, the only back and forth I had during that, that uh, matter of her there. But I thought it was really strange because we're nine days into it. I said, you're telling me. Well, isn't that great that the only type of back and forth that Marty Rathbun did take it upon himself to have is to opine over something he has no shred of license to be talking about in what world is marty rathbun qualified to discuss sedatives of someone experiencing a psychotic break state of florida that has no laws state of florida that sanctions this hotel state of florida that doesn't give a shred of an f here you have it for marty rathbun having conversations about sedatives to administer to a woman inside of the hotels that was having a psychotic break. And Marty pitches us here like, oh, I was really on the peripheral, you guys. I only told them that, you know, you should use this other sedative because I really know what in the hell I'm doing from my 20 years of experience. But you were not an auditor, Marty. You barely had any auditing or, or training. Before you, after you got the, um, the thing approved, the 501C, your pathetic pitch of a 501C that you and David and Mike Rinder and Monique Yingling all put together, lying your asses off to the IRS. That one or which one?
me nine days into it and you're looking for a sedative? Tom, this is what you need to understand. On a type three handling or a psychotic break handling, it's generally, you know, you've heard this thing about the person's put into isolation, right? Okay. That whole thing lasts a day, maybe two max. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. Do you understand me, Marty M.F. Rathbun? In what world are you pitching, isolating someone, locking them up against their will, you having not shred of a certificate to opine when someone is having a medical crisis in case you don't know what a psychotic break is? And if that's a medical crisis or if that's something you're also pitching as a religious crisis, because it would be great to understand that. And given that you had all these words that L. Ron Hubbard did teach you inside of that hotel that made you think that it was above you to go get a medical degree before having a educated, informed opinion about something you were being paid to be involved in. And before everybody goes, oh, yes, yeah, Serge, but he was only getting paid $50 a week. That is his stupidity. That doesn't mean he was not getting paid to give that opinion. He wasn't getting paid as the deputy inspector general of ethics. I mean, imagine us, you guys, that we thought that he was this big executive, well-respected, and imagine that he was nothing but little David's pathetic bitch. Imagine that. He ran around the hotel. Everybody called him, sir. Everybody, oh my God, here comes Marty Rathbun. What do you need, sir? How can I help you, sir? What can I do for you, sir? Meanwhile, behind closed doors, Marty Rathbun was getting spit on by David and Angie, who didn't give a shred of an F about his opinion. And the only reason he ended up getting anywhere near the situation, as you're going to see, is because my abuser, Angie Trent, ended up getting busted. You guys, that's what it's called in Scientology when you F up this big you get blamed you get busted and busted angie trent did she got so busted you guys that she disappeared out of clearwater all of a sudden she was moved across state lines to california away from anyone ever seeing her goddamn face again so Marty Rathbun, your opinions about how to handle someone having a psychotic break couldn't be more ill-informed, stupid, and infantile. Not to say dangerous, since you are no doctor and you have no license to be practicing medicine. In other words, if it goes beyond a day or two, there's something really weird going on. I've never seen it happen before. Well, he's never seen it happen before, you guys. And he says it with a smile because these MFers revered in their ability to do their sham, disgusting torture handlings and pat themselves in the back when things worked. I mean, the damage these people were causing cannot be underscored enough, you guys. Imagine the damage of a ridiculous man like Marty Rathbun that had no background knowing anything other than L. Ron Hubbard is my daddy. L. Ron Hubbard has great ideas, you guys. I'm a know-it-all because L. Ron Hubbard did right here that I'm very, very powerful. They couldn't have been more stupid and goo goo gaga for an indicted, convicted felon that apparently did have a lot of influence on Marty Rathbun. Apparently, it did make a big impact 
in his life. Because L. Ron Hubbard himself inspired Marty Rathbun to be a full goon. Disgusting know-it-all. Disgusting practicing law without a license. Practicing medicine without a license and not giving a shred of an F. Well, subsequently, I learned they've got her in a, in a, in a room with, which is facing uh, Osceola Avenue and there's city buses going by. There's all this noise going on. Uh, there's a whole chain of wild events um, that were going on that just don't bear any resemblance to how you're supposed to do a type three handling. But I didn't know all that. How you're supposed to do a type three handling. You guys. So again, Marty Rathbun couldn't be more sure of himself from having read a memo from L. Ron Hubbard, five pages on how to really deal with a psychotic break because L. Ron Hubbard had no shred of a clue pretending that he knew better than all doctors. He knew better than all lawyers. He knew better than every last human because he was pitching a technology and his goons, his protégés, his infantile idiots couldn't have been more enamored with the Google Gaga pitch because they wanted to go play doctor and play lawyer and be self-important and have no certificates and do no due diligence and have no merit to claim a status or title, but yet acted as if they had merit and status to be advising in matters that are so egregious beyond, but apparently not egregious enough for Florida to shut down the MF hotel. Imagine you're the state of Florida, a state where everything goes. At the moment, it was only to, when I investigated it subsequently did I find that out. My point is, it's all hush hush. This is my, this is my matter. This is something I'm reporting up lines, meaning Dave Miscavige. Okay, so it's all her thing. So I'm supposed to go off and continue doing the things I'm doing around flag at that time, which is inspecting course rooms, helping people with their communication drills and their meter drills, uh, doing confessional auditing with. Um, uh, the class 12s who are the highest level auditors down there, all that sort of thing. Well, isn't that interesting, you guys? So you just heard it from the horse's mouth himself that he was doing course room inspections in which Marty Rathbun was targeting underage minors to lock them up, to interrogate them, to ask him if they were giving literal... This, you guys, I don't even want to say the word. Marty Rathbun was asking if we were doing this to senior executives. Remember, Marty Rathbun, the type of questions you were asking, you know who in the hell I'm talking about. You would know exactly who in the literal MF hell I'm talking about. And weren't you so suspicious of her and him having this well, guess what? You missed a bunch of withholds, Marty Rathbun. You couldn't have been more of a pathetic sec checker if you weren't just so MF pathetic. You missed a bunch of withholds. And then you guys, as he tells you, that he was doing confessionals. Well, confessionals on the man, the self-admitted you know what in the literal hell I mean. Marcus Ginter, that Marty Rathbun sent to the RPF, that Marty Rathbun went and told Angie, that Marty Rathbun went and told Debbie Cook, Angie Trent, Ricky Jensen. And then they had a whole meeting where everybody on a Thursday night was told and brief. Marty Rathbun is a hero. Marty Rathbun is amazing. Marty Rathbun just found out out of an ethics interview that this man was a disgusting this that was abusing minors inside of his ethics 
room because imagine that um yeah marty rathbun was doing a sex check on an ethics officer that was doing this to kids imagine the type of ethics you're administering when you're this you guys and imagine your marty rathbun learns all about it and sends this guy to the hacienda gardens where this guy is going to be around underage kids less supervised, all insulated. I mean, a true vacation in paradise is what these people were all about providing to these type of MFers. Oh, let's really rehabilitate you. Let's really help you. Let's really use the technology from L1 Hubbard. Let's really float your needle. Let's really clean it up. Oh, yeah, it's all just a withhold. You can just blow it. Imagine that Marty Rathbun, like the idiot that he is, goes around telling people that they can just blow self-admitted felonies related to this. Imagine he was making money on that. Because that would be great for Marty Rathbun to start explaining why were people paying hundreds and thousands of dollars of so-called donations to have felonies laundered by you and the class 12s and the highest trained auditors and the minors and me, myself, and I. Because that would be great to start understanding right about now, Marty Rathbun, since it doesn't make a shred of sense. One night, I'm back at the uh, RTC office, and she's doing up her daily report that goes up to Miscavige. And uh, usually I would come in and, and sort of uh, verbally debrief on what I did during the day and she'd integrate that into her report. You know, we inspected this many course rooms and we passed this many students and we did this many confessionals. And There you go, guys. See how it's great that people like Marty, an indicted felon, Rathbun, goes out there and does this. What all lawyers tell their clients not to do if they were possibly not charged, not criminally charged, but have committed this, they tell you to shut the F up. Well, Marty Rathbun didn't want to shut the F up because he didn't have a deal after, you know, spending 10 years getting the 501c up and running and making millions. He thought, geez, why am I out here struggling? Why don't I make it a little harder for them to not make the money? How do I get on a payroll? How do I get on a monthly payment program is what Marty Rathbun thought was a great idea. And right about now, he's literally corroborating to all of you. For all of you that want to cradle and canoodle the executives and say, but they didn't know, but they were just, you know, in a cult and nobody knew anything. How about everybody knew everything? That's what being in a cult is all about. Marty Rathbun was writing daily reports. What did I do today? Who did I interrogate? What came up? What didn't come up? How many kids are implicated? How many felonies are data mined and laundered by these people? So we're going to have to really do part two you guys, because you literally cannot believe what this man has been literally enabled to get away with. Not only in the state of Florida, not only in the United States, literally enabled to do in a way that he's now getting paid to pretend that nothing happened, to pretend that he is not a child abuser himself, as if Scientology didn't find him beating his child and video recorded it.
So if those are the type of receipts that y'all have on Marty Rathbun, what type of deputy inspector general for ethics did y'all think he was going to be? Was he really that beacon of hope and ethics and integrity that you were all pitching? Or is he another one of these glorified child traffickers that doesn't want to reconcile the receipts of what he did, that doesn't want to face the decisions he made as a full-grown consenting adult man that Marty Rathbun is. As he sits there and smirks about Lisa McPherson's death, as the state of Florida didn't give a shred of an F. Not for Lisa McPherson, not for any last shred of child that has been abused inside of those hotels. Why state of Florida? Why Florida Department of Law Enforcement? Where is y'all's enforcing of any law? Because maybe you should change the title of your agency to Florida Department of No Enforcing of Any Shred of Laws. Check if that domain is available, FDLE. Since you couldn't be more pathetic and nowhere to be found to have any laws upheld in y'all's disgusting anything goes Florida state. There are no excuses, you guys. There are no goddamn excuses. And there's no more playing dumb. Those days are over. So in the next video, we're going to get into the weeds of what happened to Lisa and all the things that Marty Rathbun was so comfortable getting on the public record about. And we will continue contextualizing our time there, given that we were minors watching Lisa in video recordings of case supervisors' offices at the Fort Harrison Hotel. Don't forget, Marty Rathbun, that I was there as well. Watching all of y'all. And yeah, we didn't know what a criminal conspiracy was back then when we were abducted as so-called volunteers. But guess what? Now we do. And now we know. And now the whole world is going to know what every single one of you MFers were all about. And the longer you wait to go to the FBI Crimes Against Children Unit to really get your ethics in for once in your life, not going to a hotel room to get an ethics handling because that is not a thing, Marty Rathbun. That is called being a pathetic, infantilized degenerate. So that's what you've always been your entire life. Well, maybe choose different. Maybe stop cashing the checks that you're getting to shut the F up. And maybe start really telling them what in the hell you were doing inside of the hotel. And this time, miss David out of your little pitch. This time, just talk about your own overts and your own withholds and your own felonies and your own abuses of children inside the Fort Harrison when David was nowhere around to see you, control you, or tell you what to do. Because there's plenty of those that you need to start coming clean on before you even talk about your relationship with David. I thank you guys all for watching and I'll see you all extremely soon. Bye-bye.